Okay, well, having a degree in, in psychology has, has been very helpful to me because uh, of the study of people, and particularly people with disease, um, and knowing the anguish that they're going through and that the family is going through. You can't just treat them as a disease. You have to treat them as an entity and as a person. And you have to not only bring about healing for that person, but for that environment uh, that they come out of. So uh, it's very helpful in that sense, but it's also been very helpful to me uh, as an author uh, in terms of the books that I've written, both the autobiographical book and the philosophical books about success in life. And uh, people have related to that extremely well. And I think uh, a large part of that has been because of, of my knowledge of psychology. Yes, well, uh, obviously it's the, the highest uh, civilian award and uh, is given to people whose lives have had a very positive impact uh, on the nation. And, uh, you know, I was kind of flabbergasted uh, when I got the call. I said, are you sure you're looking for me? <laughs> but uh, because I, I have friends who have received it, like, uh, you know, the Francis Collins, who headed up the Human Genome Project and is the head of the NIH, is a good friend of mine, who received it the year before. And I was really thrilled uh, for him, so I was shocked when I got it. But um, it's a humbling uh, experience. And uh, just recognizing that, that your life has had that impact. I have hundreds of thousands of letters from young people in this country and throughout the world whose lives have been positively affected. And I really think that that's the most important thing. You know, I really don't care that much about the accolades, about the money, about any of that stuff. What's important is, is has your life had a positive impact? Is the world a better place because you were here? And that's just some degree of validation that that's true. Well, I think we definitely need health care reform. There is no question about that because we're going to bankrupt our society if we don't do it. Uh, however, you know, I'm not particularly enthusiastic about the bill that they're trying to push through uh, right now because it really doesn't address the cost issues. So we're still going to bankrupt the country. So we, we need to actually understand what the goals are and we need to sit down and then discuss it in an intelligent way with people who actually know about health care. It's sort of like um, if a bridge fell down, who would you get to, uh, to rebuild it? Would you get structural engineers or would you get people who like to talk about building bridges? Well, you know, basically that's what we're doing here. We need to get people who actually understand health care. And, uh, you know, there are way, all kinds of ways that we can get the cost out of it, do it efficiently and ways that we can begin to emphasize wellness instead of sickness, ways that we can utilize clinics instead of emergency rooms, uh, ways that we can standardize billing and collection so that we can get the administrative cost out of medicine. Tons of things I could just go on for hours talking about. And, uh, you know, I don't see uh, much interest in that. I just see this being used as a political football. And I've talked to some people uh, in the administration about it, uh, names that everybody would recognize, who admit that it's not a very good bill, but they say they'll fix it later. Well, I don't, I don't believe in just doing something and then saying you're going to fix it later. I think you got to fix it now. Yeah, I would uh, first of all say that Everybody has obstacles in life. Uh, no one, no matter whether they were born with a silver spoon in their mouth or whether they were born in the ghetto, uh, is without problems. Uh, but success is determined not by presence or absence of problems, but how you relate to them. And if that problem becomes for you an excuse and becomes a containing wall or a containing fence, then you will not achieve in life. If that problem becomes a hurdle 
and you learn how to jump over it, then each hurdle strengthens you for the next one to come along. So what I would say uh, to young people is you are the person who has the most to do with what happens to you. You get to make choices. You get to decide whether you're going to be a victim or whether you're going to be victorious. And you get to decide whether you're willing to work for your dreams or whether you think somebody should hand them to you. And if you think somebody should hand them to you, then you're going to be wishing that for a long time to come because it's just not going to happen.